president, I guess, is really to regularize. He steps in um, in cases where the prime minister cannot um, give judgment. I think he's more figurehead, if you would ask me. I think he just acts on advice of the prime minister. I think he's in basically like in charge of everything that goes on in the country. In Trinidad, I believe, well, it's the president. The Constitution of Trinidad and Tobago provides for three branches of the state, which are the executive, the parliament, and the judiciary. The president holds executive power. The executive authority of Trinidad and Tobago shall be vested in the president and, subject to this constitution, may be exercised by him either directly or through officers subordinate to him. The cabinet controls the government and is responsible to parliament. There shall be a cabinet for Trinidad and Tobago, which shall have the general direction and control of the government of Trinidad and Tobago, and shall be collectively responsible, therefore, to parliament. The cabinet consists of the prime minister, the attorney general, and ministers. The Prime Minister is the head of the cabinet. After a general election, the President appoints as Prime Minister the leader of the party that wins the majority of seats in the House of Representatives. What does the Attorney General do? The Attorney General is responsible for the administration of the legal affairs in Trinidad and Tobago and legal proceedings for and against the state. The Attorney General and all Ministers are selected by the Prime Minister. The Attorney General and all Ministers are appointed by the President, acting in accordance with the advice of the Prime Minister. All Ministers must be Members of Parliament appointed from either the Senate or the House of Representatives. This is different from the system in the United States of America, where no member of the Executive can be a member of the Legislature. So that you say that the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary should all be separate. Their functions are distinct, speaking generally again, because I could go into all sorts of details to show they're not actually so. But in general, one would say that these three should operate independently. Now, that's not the case in Trinidad. It is the case in some countries, for instance, in America. If you're a member of, the, of either the House of Representatives or the Senate, you couldn't be a minister. Ministers are drawn from outside. So you have a separation of executive from the legislature. On the other hand, judges are confirmed, judges of the Supreme Court, by the Senate. And therefore, the Senate has a say in determining the judiciary. So that I think one should steer clear of something that can be as misleading as the question of separation of powers. The term separation of powers is a term coined in the 1700s um, by a very famous French political philosopher by the name of Montesquieu. And the, the essential thinking behind it, certainly in those days, were that the three branches of government, which you've all heard the terms, the executive, the legislature, judiciary, that there should really be no overlap in their functions, that they should be separate and apart, and that good governance, in a sense, required that each of these institutions were you know, independent of each other. It's, it's a very theoretical... Um, doctrine, if I could put it that way. We've come a long way since 1700 and government today is a far more complicated um, exercise than it was in those days. Who leads the cabinet in the absence of the Prime Minister? Where the Prime Minister is absent from Trinidad and Tobago or is unable to perform his functions, the President may authorize another member of Cabinet to perform those functions. Who assigns portfolios of Ministers? The President, acting in accordance with the advice of the Prime Minister, may assign to the Prime Minister or any other Minister 
responsibility for any business of the government, including the administration of any government department. The president should have more power, should be the one that has more power than the Prime Minister. Uh, from what I can see, the Prime Minister has more power because he well, that's around the country. Definitely the Prime Minister since we have Prime Ministerial Government. Right now as it is, the Prime Minister. But the Prime Minister is the one who advises the President on what to do. The leader I really don't know, I guess he's the head of state, but I think most of the work um, is done by the Prime Minister. The President is the head of state, the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, and the Executive Authority is vested in him. His powers are exercisable within certain constitutional limits and most of his constitutional acts must be performed in accordance with the advice of or after consultation with the cabinet, the prime minister or the leader of the opposition. The prime minister and his cabinet are responsible for running the day-to-day -day affairs of the nation. What is the relationship between the president and the cabinet? The Prime Minister keeps the President fully informed about the general conduct of the government and provides the President with any information which he may request with respect to government matters. Our national coat of arms with our national buds inscribed therein is the sacred trust of all our citizens. So it is today. Please, I urge you, let it always be so. Let us always be able to say with the Psalmist, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. What is a parliamentary secretary? The president, acting on the advice of the prime minister, appoints parliamentary secretaries from among the senators and the house to assist ministers in the performance of their duties. What is a permanent secretary? A minister is responsible for the general direction and control over the government department assigned to him or her. However, the department is under the supervision of a permanent secretary who is a public officer. What is the role of the Prime Minister? Well, the normal stream of Republican development, which is an executive president, who is both king, so to speak, head of state, and head of government. You have the Prime Minister. You could have a presidential system, as you would call it, where the President has a Prime Minister who takes orders from the President. You have now, beginning with India, the other system where, remaining within the Commonwealth tradition, the Prime Minister, the head of government, is the person that is responsible for the administration. In our system, the Prime Minister is head of government. And therefore, he continues to have the powers that he had under the 62 Constitution, where he was head of government. So there's really no change. The only change is in the question of the making appointments to key offices. And that uh, power has been transferred, you might say, from the Prime Minister to the President. The President may establish offices, make appointments to such offices, and terminate any such appointments. And all President normally acts on the advice of, of the Prime Minister or the opposition leader. He more or less acts on advice. However, there are some issues that he is responsible for directly. Well, the President, um, he cannot do anything on his own unless he gets advice from the, um, the Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition. Well, the role of the President is to ensure that the needs of the country are met and basically give a signature at the end of any bill that is passed. Well, the president is the head of state. From what I've seen, it seems as if he has power at critical times. I think he is the commander of the armed forces. At times he may act on his own, but most of the time he takes advice from the prime minister and the leader of the opposition. Executive authority is vested in the President. The Cabinet consists of the Prime Minister, the Attorney General and the Ministers. The Attorney General and all Ministers are selected by the Prime Minister and appointed by the President. All Ministers must be members of Parliament. The President, acting on the advice of the Prime Minister, assigns portfolios of Ministers. 
Prime Minister and his cabinet are responsible for running the day-to-day -day affairs of the nation. The President, acting on the advice of the Prime Minister, appoints parliamentary secretaries. A minister is responsible for the general direction of government departments. The department is under the supervision of a permanent secretary. Democracy means more, much more, than the right to vote and one vote for every man and every woman of the prescribed age. Democracy means recognition of the rights of others. Democracy means the equality of all in the eyes of the law. Democracy means equality of opportunity for all in education, in the public service, and in private employment. I repeat, and in private employment. Democracy means the protection of the weak against the strong. Democracy means the obligation of the minority to recognize the right of the majority. Democracy means responsibility of the government to its citizens. The protection of the citizens.